this is a five minute tech tip from Troy and Joan. And this is about using Google Classroom. We've had a lot of teachers that have liked uh, using Google Classroom, so this will be helpful for those just getting started. This is a brand new Google Classroom, and we're going to start with our opening page. Notice the plus sign in the corner. This is where you add content to Google Classroom. Let's create our first assignment for our classroom. Uh, just as you would in many learning management systems, this is going to be a title, all right? And then I want to emphasize that you can add instructions here or you can do that in another place. But a lot of my teachers uh, like to add the instructions right here with the assignment. An assignment has a due date and a time. Um, it is easy to use the calendar. You just click a new due date. But I want you to notice it defaults to midnight. Um, if you need to have your students have things turned in a little bit earlier than that, maybe by the end of the day, you're going to look at the time. Every single Google Classroom assignment has the option to add attachments of all types of files. I'm going to go get something out of Google Drive for my students. As soon as you add a Google Drive or other types of files to Google Classroom, there is a drop down over here. And teachers need to know the difference between the three options in the drop down. When students view the file, the only thing they can do is see it. They are unable to edit any content on the file. And Troy, what happens when you choose students can edit a file? They can all edit the same document. That's for a collaborative effort. And finally, if you want your photocopy machine, choose make a copy for each student. That way every student has their own and they can work on their own copy. Right. So if you have a template that you want them to work from, but you want to keep the template the same, you make a copy. Because if you leave it as all students can edit, then they will be editing the actual template. Exactly. Here's a great feature. I don't have to retype all this in another class. I can simply check the box and make sure that all the classes that are getting this assignment will have it. I don't have to assign it right away. I can schedule this assignment. There are all kinds of reasons you would do that. Yeah, I've seen teachers do it, particularly with like sub plans where they have things released throughout the day so that students don't try to work on everything at once. Um, as mm -hmm. soon as it becomes available. Or maybe it's an inquiry lesson and you don't really want the kids hearing right up front what the problem is. This is an opportunity to schedule it. Or you can just save the draft for later and it'll show up above in your saved drafts so that you can assign it whenever you wish. I'm going to go ahead and press assign. The beauty in Google Classroom is that that assignment is now there for students to see and get going on or it's also in their Google Calendar. And if you've made your Google Calendar public, even parents can see those assignments in the due date. The other, finally, um, just to differentiate between an assignment, there is something called an announcement. What makes that one different, Troy? Uh, the assignment, you can set a due date, and it shows up in the student's due date list. Um, but the announcement doesn't have a due date. So when I press post on an announcement, um, it's just there. And it does not show up on the Google Calendar because it doesn't have a due date. And that's pretty much all the content that's available uh, to get you started in Google Classroom. And if you haven't, if this is mid-year when you're finally watching this video, you can start a classroom at any time. Um, some teachers start at the beginning of the year, but some don't start a classroom until mid-year, and they find um, they can still quickly get the students into it um, easily. Absolutely. And that's our tech tip for Google Classroom.